Oh, God is good. Is God good? All the time. God is good? No matter what. I don't care how my situation is, but my God remains good. Because goodness of God is His virtue. I don't get tired of telling this to you because you must know that my God is good. Amen. I want to brag about the way my God works. He is a good God and He has good plans for you. He has plans to give you peace. He has plans to prosper you. It is not for calamity that He has chosen you, but for peace and prosperity. How many of you want to put up your hands? Shout an Amen. It is for peace and prosperity He has chosen you. And that's why He says, have an expectation. Have an expectation. If you read from Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, it starts like this. I will give you an expected end. So now, I must ask you, what is your expectation? Let me know what your expectation is. The Lord is saying, let me know what your expectation is. And I will give you that expected end. So better set your expectations right. Right according to the word of God. Always check with the word what it says about you. Don't just keep talking about what you feel about you. Come on. Feelings can be miserable. Feelings can be deceiving. Feelings can give you happiness at times and it can draw you down the drain. Anything can happen with your feelings. But my God does not work according to your feelings. He has His nature called goodness and out of that nature He sees you and He will work for you. God indeed is so good so so good amen he's so good and and he cannot change his virtue he cannot change his character no matter what his character does not change so if you think you are in a particular situation where it is it is looking very very difficult where it is looking very challenging still God has permitted that thing in your life so that uh, you will be processed through that and become a beautiful product. Every product undergoes a process. To have a beautiful product, you will need to go through a process. This is the one thing that is different from the, from the world, from the corporate world, from the world itself and your position with Christ. There in the corporate world, there in the world, they give you a process before you get into a position. Do I make sense to somebody out here? You have to go through a process to get into a position. Oh, I, okay, let me not confuse you. Probably it is your education that put you in a position that you have today. Are there IT people in the house here? IT people. So why are you in that particular position that you are handling in, the, in your work? Because you studied to do what you are doing. Probably if you haven't studied that particular education that you have had, you would not have been chosen for that place. Or they might check you on an experience level of what you know and put you there. So you go through a process to get to a position. But this is what it is. The good news with your identity in Christ. You are given a position first before you go through a process. Amen. Amen. First comes your position. Then comes the process. Amen. He doesn't care about what you're qualified with how you came about, which family you belong to, 
which clan, which country, whatever, what skin color, creed, nothing he cares about. All this does not matter to him. Firstly, he gives you a position. And then after that position, you go through a process. And probably that is why you're sitting here today. This is also a process that you are going through. Process of knowing him more. Amen. You need to desire for more of God. Because you're called to be God-like. You're not called to be man-like, but you're called to be God-like. He said, I will create in my image. We will create man in our own image. We will create man in our own image. Which means the original intention of God was for you to be created in his image. To carry his image. To reflect him all your lives. That's why I said you're called to be God-like. You're not called to be man-like. If you see another man and think that, oh yeah, I, I'm also like him. I will do like him. Please understand, he was also created to be like God. Maybe he missed the mark and he's going through some other thing. You don't follow him, you better follow God. That solves the most of it. For those of us who get offended in church, this is one thing you need to know. Everybody is human. And if you expect them to be perfect, I'm sorry, it will disappoint you. That person may disappoint you. Maybe he has the highest caliber. He has the highest position. Maybe you were looking up to him all these years. Like he's the best of the best. He's the best leader that I have ever known. Maybe these are the uh, you know, credits you have given to that man. But he may also fail one day. It is better to follow God all the time so that the failures of man will not impact you. How many of you want to shout an amen? You just need to focus on God. Keep your heart on Him. Hold on to Him. Trust Him. Rely upon Him. And He will take you through. Today, the Lord wanted me to strengthen you with confidence. We have called this month a month of confidence and rejoicing. But I felt something in my spirit that I have to share with you. More than this statement being a promise statement, more than this being a prophetic uh, utterance over you, prophetic promise over you, this is a counsel of God. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, God will give you the confidence. God will give you the rejoicing. That is God's work. But when? When you sit like this and give heed to the voice of God. I'm not talking about you sitting in front of me and listening to what I'm saying. Of course, it is, it is God ordained. It is, it is designed by God to be this way. But I'm talking about you listening to the voice of God, no matter who he uses to speak to you. You need to sit like this, in the presence of God, wanting to hear from you, desiring to hear his voice. And when you do that, when your heart is, is for his voice, things are going to be different. And there you get your confidence. And there you'll get your rejoicing. So what am I trying to say here? It's not just a prophetic fulfillment or the promise that God gives you about your confidence and rejoicing, but it is the counsel of the Spirit to you. You need to feel confident and you need to rejoice. So it is not God who is going to do that for you, but it is you who will feel confident and you who will rejoice in God. Apostle Paul says like this, Rejoice! And again, I say, Rejoice! Rejoice! Rejoice in everything because you have God on your side. 
Amen. Because you have God as your partner himself. The creator God who created the whole universe is your partner. Hmm? Amen. He's not just God, but he's also your father. He's your friend. John 15, 15 says that no more are you called my servants, but what? Friends. He calls you friends. Now tell me who other person can be with, with, with you to share everything that you have. You need a friend, right? Some things that you may not be able to even share to your own people, to your family, to your, to your siblings, to your dad, to your mom, to your husband, to your wife. You end up sharing that with a friend who you trust. Isn't that true? All of us need friends, right? And this God knows. And that's why he comes in the place of a friend. Which means he is telling you that you don't need to reserve anything from me. You don't need to hide anything from me. He says you can talk to me like how you talk to your friend. You can share your heart with me like how you share your heart with your friend. You cannot hide from the presence of God. You cannot conceal anything from God. Even the night is day unto Him. Even the darkness is light unto Him. Are you trying to go and hide in some shady place? I'm telling you, God is there. He is omnipresent. You don't tell me with the place that you have gone, I'm sure the Lord is not here. Mm. Maybe the hand of God may not work in that place. Maybe. But if God decides, He's sovereign. I'm telling you, He's sovereign. He can touch people when they are drinking in the bars. Mm. When they take a drag of their dope, He can still touch them. I have heard testimonies of God working with people when they, when they smoke their weed. And they gave their lives to God. And this is possible for God. I'm talking about the omnipresent God. He's present everywhere. He knows your inner man. He searches your heart. And He uses your spirit to search your heart. Your spirit cannot lie to Him. Mm. Maybe you're trying to lie to God with your mouths. Oh, that comes from your, from your senses. But your spirit cannot lie to God, you see? And so that's why he uses your spirit to search your inner man. And so what am I saying here? You are all spirit people. You are not flesh people, but you are spirit people. Hallelujah. And that's why you need to be mindful of the things of the spirit. Say, Spirit, I am going to be, you need to put your hands up. If the Lord has convicted you, you have to say this aloud. I am going to be mindful of the Spirit. I will care for what God wants me to do. I am not going to give in to the, to the works of my flesh. Or the desires of my flesh. But I will stand strong. Because he is with me. Because the spirit of God is strengthening me. Because the grace of God has been given to me. I will come above. The desires of the flesh. Amen. Amen. So now, talking about you feeling confident, you being in the place of confidence and rejoicing, you need to know where your confidence is. Without knowing where your confidence is, then where is the question of even being confident? Now, if you do not know, then how is your rejoicing coming along the way? 
can we talk practical one will rejoice when he feels confident when she feels confident is that right for us to feel rejoicing for us to rejoice we need to feel confident isn't that right is both connected coupled intertwined yes indeed if you have to rejoice then you need to know that you are well placed is that right you need to know that you are in the right place now i'm talking about you feeling confident you knowing that you have a god with you will be your confidence say an amen so now the title of today's sermon is where is your confidence founded let it not be founded on anything else but god himself but the presence of god that is with you where is your confidence let it be on the identity of christ let it be on the identity that you carry as christ people and so you are called christians christians to the very name it means a lot it means so much when you say christian but i bet you nobody understands the meaning of what a christian means they just say because they go to church and and they don't even care which kind of a church that they go to what kind of a doctrine they listen to but the name christian means everything to us because christ is in you you are called a christian so your confidence will come out of the place that you have with christ which means your confidence is based on the identity that you carry what is your identity now you're the sons of god you're the daughters of god that is your identity when your confidence comes from that identity then you rejoice is there is there something that can stop you rejoicing when you know that you are the son of god when you know that you are the daughter of god can anything stop you from rejoicing so that's the confidence that we are talking about you need to be confident in the place that god has given you as his sons as his daughters hallelujah read with me from john 1:12 and 13 so now i want to read it in three versions where is sam thank you sam for reading those scriptures in the message version like father like son i like reading scriptures in different versions you know what sometimes you need to do that too whatever you are reading compare it with different versions i'm sure the lord will speak to you probably you're just doing a reading exercise but you know what you should be doing you must have a knowing exercise you must know god from what you're reading hmm out of what you read will come faith amen it should mean something to you and that's why you need to you need to give all your heart to the word of god there is nothing more than the word of god he has exalted his word above everything else i'm going to read this for you but to all who did okay i'm reading from a version called esv english standard version but to all who did receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god 13th verse it is of god okay that is the 13th verse now i'm going to read it to you from niv version yet to all who did receive him to those who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of god can i hear a name man for those who believe say believe 
If you believe in Jesus, then you are born of God. Amen. He goes back to your birth and He changes your history. Shout an amen to this. He does that. You know why I'm talking about history? He erases part of your history. Amen. He makes your slate clean. He makes you all the more new. Amen. I'm going to read to you in the third, uh, the third version that I was talking about, message version. But whoever did want him, who believed he was, who he claimed and would do what he said. You see, it's, it's building up. To understand the same scripture that we read in ESV, you, you now know what to, how to believe in God. To believe in God is to listen to His voice and to give in to what He said. But whoever did want Him, who believed He was who He claimed and would do what He said, He made to their true selves. He did not make them slaves, but He made them true selves. He made them true selves their child of God selves, these are the God begotten, not blood begotten, not flesh begotten, not sex begotten. Can it be more clear to you? Hmm. You cannot, this is the point here, you cannot serve God in your flesh. Shout an amen to this. You cannot please God if you identify yourself, if you are that you are a flesh man. There was a stage like that. But we have walked through it. We have passed through it. God has helped us walk past those stages. May I have um, Galatians 4? Galatians 4 from, from first verse itself. See, today I'm going to just read a few verses that will set the thing right. You know what? There is a scripture in 2 Corinthians, it says like this. There is a stronghold always working against mankind. How many of you are Christians here? I, I told you the meaning of Christians itself. Now boldly lift your hands if you are Christians. So you are Christians and you came from whatever your old belief system was. Whatever your religious, you know, fanaticism was. Your religious hold was. But even today, even as Christians, there may be some strongholds working against you. That's why the Bible is saying, those are the strongholds that is in your mind. Strongholds of the mind. You must know that you are not of the worldly order, but you are of the heavenly order. And that's why you are supplied with the weapons from the heaven to beat out these these rebellious fights from the strongholds. Now the Bible says, everything that rises against the knowledge of God, every lofty opinion, if you have lofty opinions today, God is looking for a surrender. Do not be opinionated about God. How long will you limp between opinions? If you are for the ball, you be there. If you are for a, for a foreign God, you be there. If you are for Jehovah, you be there. If you are for Jesus, you be there. Amen. How long are you going to limp between opinions? I know that I'm talking to Christians. I know that you're not serving other gods literally. But what are those gods that is in your heart today? What is that that takes your adoration? You know what the dictionary talks about? Idol? You know what is the meaning of an idol? The one that takes excessive adoration. Now what is it that is taking excessive adoration? What is it taking your priority? Is God taking your priority? If something else is taking your priority, please let me tell you today, that is your God. That is the idol that is on your heart. And God says, that idol needs to be destroyed. 
Amen. And so, we need to fight against the stronghold with the weapons of the heavenly order, which is the word of God, and bring it to complete captivity and obedience to Christ. I'm speaking over each of you who is seated here, who is hearing my voice. Every lofty opinion that raises itself against the knowledge of God, I bring it into complete captivity and obedience to the name of Jesus. Let your minds be open to receive what God has for you. Amen. Now Galatians 4 says, I mean that the hair, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. And, but he is under guardians and manages until the date set by his father. It's so clear. I don't need explanation on this. It is simple English. Can I read the first verse again? The hair. I'm talking about somebody who is carrying inheritance from, from a family. The hair of the family. You understand what I'm speaking about? Don't, you need to relate to a father and a son relationship. Then only you will understand this. I mean that the hair, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by his father. You know, we are, we are bringing up children. You, you know, it, it means so much to us. We have, we have probably kept, kept somebody at home to take care of the child. And they are supposed to be doing what that somebody says. What that caretaker says. And the caretaker may be anybody. Right? It says... Until a date set by his father, they are under the guardian's care. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. You know where, where I'm coming from? I was just telling you that we were once like that. We were once without the knowledge of who we are. But now, after the light of the word has come upon you, after you have been enlightened by the word, after the light has come upon you, you need to open up. In the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, now you see where, which is the fullness of time? God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Amen. God sent forth His Son is the key thing that you need to get in your lives. And that Son was sent for you. You will know your valley if you know who died for you. I'm talking about the Son of God dying for you. You know how much you're of worth and value to God? That is how much you're worth. To even give His own Son on the cross just for you. Because He loves you. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. We carry the Spirit of God in our hearts not crying, oh, I am your child, God. Will you not see me? I'm your child. No, no. The counsel of God comes here. The Spirit of God tells you that you are given the spirit of sonship. You are given the spirit of adoption to call him Abba Father. He teaches you to call him Abba Father. When you call him Abba Father, he takes care of the rest. Is your confidence building up today? Can I hear somebody say an amen? amen? If this is ministering to you. Amen. You need to call him Abba Father. And that's the rights of the sonship that is upon you. That's the rights of the adoption that you carry. And I have talked about adoption so many times. Adoption always had a choice. It's unlike the natural birth where you don't have a choice to choose who you want. Adoption always has a choice. And by His choice, by the sovereign choice of God. Oh, 
I'm telling you. He looked at you, Manoj, he looked at you and he said, I need this guy. It is him who chose you. It is not you who chose him. Amen. By his choice, he adopted you into his family. And so you are no longer a slave, but a son. Amen. And if a son, then an heir through God. Amen. If you are a son, then you carry the inheritance. Then you carry what belongs to you. What belongs to you is all the blessings that Jesus has. Amen. You know what? In the place of you, Jesus died. Where your sins were imputed on him. So you came in the place of Jesus carrying all his righteousness on you. The righteousness of Jesus came imputed on you. And that is why he calls you the righteousness of God. How many righteous people in the house? Hello? Can I hear an amen? amen. Righteous people said? Amen. amen. You're called righteousness of God. Because Jesus in you, you're called so. Hallelujah. Can I have Romans 8:12? So then, brothers, we are debtors. Now, after having understood all of that, you know, I kept calling you as sons, as daughters, the spirit of adoption having been given to you, the spirit of sonship being bestowed on you. Now what to do? We'll go from 8, 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Are we debtors? Yes, we are debtors. But to the Spirit. When it says you are not debtors to the flesh, it, it implies that you are debtors to the Spirit. Amen. See, let me tell you, you don't have an obligation to love God. Which means, you are not compelled, you are not forced to love God. Even when you were after darkness, when you were... You were nothing in front of him. He loved you. When you were a complete sinner, he loved you. Knowing this, you start loving him. Am I making sense? Nobody loves you like the way he loves you, right? Knowing this makes you fall in love with him. Now that's, that's not an obligation. But now after having known this, you have an obligation. You know what? That obligation is to live by the Spirit. Say an amen. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. How many of you are led by the Spirit of God? God calls you the sons. God calls you the daughters. Amen. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. You have received, you have been given, you have been gifted with the adoption of Sons, you have been called and adopted as sons. You have been given the spirit of sonship. You have been given and gifted with the spirit of adoption. So now you understand why Anchorage is based on these uh, four scriptures from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 19 to 22. In the 19th verse, we see this belonging there. First of all, you are made to belong. Say an amen if you understand this. You belong to somebody, that's the best place you have. Knowing that you belong to somebody gives you that confidence. Now we are coming back to our subject. How will you ever feel confident? When you know that you belong to somebody, you feel confident. And now God says that you belong to me. Now He says that you're my son. He says you're my daughter. 
Amen. That sense of belonging gives you the confidence. You did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. By whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So it's two way. It's two way. Even if God comes here, stands here, takes a mic and shouts and screams at you, if your spirit does not agree with it, right, it's not going to be of any use. It's not going to help you if you don't give in. You see, even the worship leader today, Sam, was saying this, Lord, we give you permission. And even when I was praying, I said, we give you permission. It's not that God is small that He needs your permission, man. That, that's not what it means. But God is not a forceful God. My God is not a forceful God. He's a gentle God. If you... Okay, this is going to be raw. If you reject him, he will reject you. Isn't that right? If you reject him, he will reject you. If you receive him, he will receive you. So the whole thing is about rejection and reception. Say with me once again. The whole thing that we studied today is what happens if we reject, what happens if we receive. The Bible says he came for his own people, but they did not receive him. But those of you who received him, it's a super good status. Shout an amen with me. The status is that you are called sons of God. The status is you are called the daughters of God. And from that position, if you start operating, you will feel confident and you will rejoice in God. Can we stand up?